Inspirations podcast and I am Adele coming to you from Pretoria in South Africa. This is podcast number five. The first four I did, I uh, did in my home language, which is Afrikaans, but I'm going to try and do it in English because I would love to uh, get more viewers to subscribe and um, I would love to reach more viewers because I've got a passion for uh, knitting and crochet with our local, uh, mostly local South African hand-dyed yarns, natural fibers, and I think um, I would love to show it to more people all over the world. Unfortunately, in South Africa, uh, watching podcasts is, is not yet uh, very popular, so I'm struggling to get uh, more viewers here in South Africa with uh, pod while podcasting in Afrikaans. So I will try and do it in English and I would love for you to subscribe and hit the little bell for the so that you can get notifications when I upload a new podcast. Please be with me if I'm struggling for um, to find the right words sometimes. Uh, I'm not that fluent in English, but I am really going to try and give this a go. As I said, this will be a podcast about knitting and crochet, mostly. Uh, I love uh, working with hand-dyed yarns. I love our local merino and um, our local Maui is lovely. We export about 64% uh, um, of the world's uh, Maui comes from South Africa. So it's, I think it's a really good quality as well as our Merino. And we have also got nice cotton and bamboo that um, are also hand dyed by some of the local and dyed, um, local indie dyers. Uh, I know that um, you might not be familiar with our um, indie dyers here in South Africa, so um, when I I will try and mention all the patterns that I'm talking about um, down below, and I will also uh, mention the indie dyers that I am talking about. If I forget one and you are not sure, please just go back in the video or um, you are welcome to ask me any questions um, in the comments um, on, um, below the YouTube video and I will try and answer. Okay, the first thing um, I would like to do is to show one or two of the projects I've recently finished. I'm not that good with um, doing show notes so it might be a little bit scrambled, but I will try and keep it as organized as possible. I also don't do a lot of uh, um, editing on my videos, so uh, please just uh, forgive all the babbling and mistakes. I'm not going to try and cut them all out. The first thing um, that I can talk about quickly is the kiddie wrap that's on the mannequin behind me. That's uh, one of the shawls I finished recently. It's a kiddie wrap by Amber O'Brien and I did it in uh, three colors, uh, sock white hand dyed yarn. The, the black charcoal color is by one of a kind yarns and the two lighter colors is by Miss Lamott yarns. I made a little boo-boo with um, the wrap, so it's not uh, totally as it should be. As you can see, there's a, a broader uh, charcoal stripe in the middle of the wrap. Uh, what happened is, because the sock weight is a little bit uh, heavier weight than was uh, prescribed in the pattern, I decided, uh, when I was busy with the first of the two triangles, I decided to make it a little bit smaller because I was, wasn't was sure that, um, I was afraid that it might be a little bit too large, the wrap. So I made the first triangle a little, little bit smaller and um, 
quite some time went by before I was at that stage with the second triangle. It took me, a, um, I was busy with this wrap for a, a few months. And when I reached that point with the second triangle, I had forgot that I made the first triangle a little bit smaller. And when I wanted to join the two, that is only when I realized that they are not going to match. But um, I wasn't too worried because um, there's a saying in Afrikaans, a boer, mark a plan. And that is what I did. I just added some more charcoal rows to the one side of the first triangle until I had um, a, a matching amount of stitches. And then I um, joined the, the two together. And um, I don't mind the broader charcoal um, stripe in the middle i love that charcoal color i love the contrast between the two lighter colors and the charcoal color so it doesn't bother me at all i love it it's still huge and um it's got a um, interesting shape um so i'm not tot entirely sure how to uh, drape it around me i'm still struggling with um some shapes uh, of shawls or wraps uh, to get them to um, to wrap them around me so that I can feel comfortable with them. But um, I will. I think the way it is done there, it's quite cozy and nice and very um, soft and cuddly, and I I really like it. Okay, that's a kitty wrap by Amber O'Brien. I'm wearing my Daydream sweater by Heidi Kermeyer. At last we've got winter in South Africa and it is um, sweater weather and scarf weather. I don't know how long it will last. Our winters are not very long or that long. So if um, the opportunity occurs to, to wear a sweater or a scarf, you have to make full use of the opportunity. So this is my daydream sweater. I'll just stand up a little bit. I did it in a uh, Meyer cotton modal blend. So it's very soft and comfortable. I really like it. Um, uh, it is uh, the original pattern is in one color. I did two colors because that is what I had in my stash, and I didn't have enough of just only uh, the one color to do the entire sweater in only one color. And I, I really liked both the colors, and I wanted to use them both. So I'm uh, very happy with the outcome of the sweater. Uh, when I um, I've worn it a few times and um, the, the neckline uh, was a little bit too stretched out for me. I think it's um, when you started to wear something, it does, um, uh, the fabric does uh, relax a little bit and it didn't have a very, um, a very stable, uh, it didn't have uh, any border around the collar. So um, I decided to just do three rows of single crochet. I crocheted uh, three rows of single crochet around the neckline. And um, I think it uh, worked out quite well. I will definitely consider doing that um, again in future if uh, a, gom, a, a sweater or a cardigan doesn't have um, anything to stable it around the uh, neckline so now it's perfect and I think it's it's much more firm now around the neckline and I think it it worked well you can see it's just three rows of single crochet so that's the daydream sweater by Heidi Kermeyer Another thing, a uh, project, a, a huge project that I finished was, is my um, uh, chameleon blanket. It's very heavy because it is done in merino, uh, like a double knit hand dyed merino by one of a kind yarns. 
Um, the pattern is a, the um, chameleon baby blanket by Tracy St. John. But I made it bigger. I made 12 squares. Um, it's a crochet blanket. It won't be possible to show you the whole blanket. I don't know, maybe I can just um, stand up again to just show you a little bit of the blanket. I joined the squares with a slip stitch at the back um, that gives the um, that uh, makes the that makes a nice uh, um, solid join at the front. I think it was, um, I tried various uh, ways of joining it and that is definitely um, the one that uh, it, it looked, uh, um, uh, how can I describe it, um, it had the best uh, feeling for me at the front uh, is to do the, the slip stitch through uh, one loop of each square at the back of the um, so you hold the two right sides together, like this, and then you um, just slip stitch through one uh, loop of each square while holding them together. Gives it a very neat appearance at the back as well as um, in the front. And then uh, the pattern uh, calls for the, um, you, you repeat the, the same pattern um, around for the border. I just added one row of single crochet around the entire blanket when I was finished. After, after I've done the, the border as, as is subscribe, described in the pattern. So there you can also see that it's got a nice um, smooth join at the front. So it weighs about almost two kilogram. It is heavy. I know uh, making a blanket with merino yarn is heavy uh, if you use a double knit thickness. But um, the feeling is so soft and so luxurious and um, I enjoy every stitch I make uh, when working with uh, the uh, double knit merino uh, yarns. So this was all a man dyed merino by one of a kind yarns. And I just love the outcome of this blanket and the colors. I love everything about it. So that is the Chameleon Blanket by Tracy St. John. I also completed my Land of Sweet Skull. Um, I didn't make it, I didn't do all the repeats of the pattern. Um, I think it's this way around. You start here and um, there's a lace and in between the lace parts are some uh, plain, plainer parts. I didn't uh, repeat the last lace spot and in the last uh, um, stitch pattern after that uh, because I, I, I was, wasn't was sure if it may be too um, hot for our South African weather and I think this is um, perfect. I will definitely get some wear out of this. I used the, also uh, again one of a kind yarns, uh, 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 the name of the yarn is Urenda, it's a cotton bamboo true blend. 
I used the same yarn for my zigzag scarf that I've shown in one of the previous uh, podcasts. Uh, I just uh, I used eight colors in in the scarf. I really um, get uh, lots of wear out of these kind of scarves uh, with a cotton bamboo blend because it's um, soft and light and not so warm. And that's perfect for our South African weather. So um, this was um, the yarn that I had left from, from the scarf I used for the Land of Sweet Skull. Uh, so I only had eight colors. The, the pattern is written for minis. Um, each little part that um, you, uh, you can use a different uh, a little mini skein for. But I just wanted to use the same yarns. And so this is... I've made two items out of the 850 gram skeins and I've still got some left. So there you can see the difference when you uh, do some color melting in the zig like in the zigzag scarf and in this one is just um, a single color um, parts that you do. So that is My Land of Sweet Skull by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade and this was my zigzag scarf. Um, the pattern is a free on free pattern on rivalry by Christy Kong. So that is all the um, items that I have finished recently. Uh, I can quickly show now what I am busy with. I do have quite a few projects on the go. Um, I don't like just working on one project at a time. Uh, when I'm almost finished with a project, I would uh, put all my concentration and time into that project to get it finished. But I like to work on... I don't have a lot. I don't have... Um, I've seen some people on podcasts and everywhere that's got like 10 or 20 um, works in progress. I don't have that many. Uh, I've got about, say, four or five um, that I'm working on at the same time because I like to knit and I like to crochet. And I'm also doing workshops where I... Um, uh, where I concentrate on working uh, knitting and crocheting with hand dyed yarns and do how to do some color melting and marling and um, when I get a new idea of a sample that I can make for my workshops I have to do it immediately to see if it will work and um, to get it on the underway so that I can at least show the, um, the sample in my workshops so I've got that going in between as well but something um, I wanted to do this year, there's two things I, I want to, wanted to um, teach myself this year. The one was brioche knitting and the other one is um, color work. Uh, I've not uh, started um, doing the color work um, yet, but I've started with a brioche. I've done the uh, 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 beginner's Brioche Cow by Lavanya Patricella that I've shown on a previous podcast. And um, now I am busy with the um, Brioche Twister Scarf that's by East London Knits. I think it's, it's a perfect uh, pattern to... Uh, start uh, when you are trying to um, learn brioche I think it's it's a perfect pattern for that it's not that wide that if you have to rip back that you've got uh, lots of stitches and long rows to rip back and um, you do some plain brioche and you also learn simple decreases and increases I think it's perfect for that and I think when this is blocked it will open up nicely and I 
I'm sure I'm going to wear this a lot. So this is the, the first twister part. And then there's a lot of plain brioche for the part that goes around your neck. So it will be um, like this. Oh, it's so soft. I can't wait to finish this. So this is the first part that will... So that will hang around the front. And then the plain brioche part goes around your neck. And then the second twister part will hang down in front again. And I can't wait to finish it. It's going to be so soft and cuddly with, den with my jeans that I wear. That's all I wear in winter is my jeans. So it will, I think it will be perfect. And it will, when I've blocked it, it will open up a little bit. And I think that the width is perfect. I'm very impressed with uh, how it looks. This is the back. So this is my, the brioche twister scarf and I'm using again one of a kind yarns uh, merino. Uh, this is the two colors. I think this yarn is just perfect for, for brioche. I'm using the 4mm uh, knitting needles. Uh, I've tried going down to a 3.75mm but then I don't like the feeling. It's too tight and I don't enjoy knitting it with a 3.75 So with a 4mm I'm really enjoying um, the process and that is what is very important to me. It's very soft and very cuddly. I love it. And then uh, something else I'm busy with. Uh, this is a bit of, an, of a complex explanation. And there's lots of uh, little cables and things still attached here. But uh, I'm busy with the quicksand cardi again by Heidi Kermeyer. In uh, um, the yarn I'm using is a, a worsted weight by Stellar Fiber Works. I'm using two uh, two tonal colors. She had four of each, so um, I had to buy the two different ones. But um, they work very well together. Also very soft merino in a worsted weight by Stella Fiber Works. Uh, I've only got one sleeve. Um, I'm busy with a second sleeve. But I went through quite a process uh, because I'm using two different tonal colors. Um, I um, struggled a little bit to, to get it all to match up with the sleeves and the body. And um, as I've shown on Instagram, um, I've alternated uh, the two colors all the time, but when when the first two skeins or balls were um, was finished, I um, I think I sh I should have in the middle of the first when I was busy with the first two skeins, in the middle of that I should have alternated or switched the one. Uh, color for for the other one because uh, it's two different colors but they differ the, the colors itself differ from 
skein to skein. And that is just the thing with hand dyed yarns. So there's a bit of a, a um, you can see where I've started the two second um, skeins. But I'm not too worried about it and I think when, when I've uh, washed it and soaked it a little bit um, it will all ease out and I'm sure it will just look fine. I'm not that worried about it. Um, but um, for when I ever um, come across a, a project where I'm using two different skeins, I will remember not to change both of them at the same time. I, I should have started maybe uh, one of them, say, about there, and then just used the other half of the first skein at the end somewhere. So this is the back. It's also a very, um, I love the pattern. It's very simple. Um, but I think it's, it's, it's a design that you will always wear. So this is the back. I finished that. Uh, there's no uh, border um, or edging for this uh, cardigan. I hope this will work out. I just I did a few rows of garter stitch at the bottom. Uh, the whole uh, cardigan I I'm knitting with also with 4.5 millimeter, although the pattern calls for I think a 5.5 millimeter. Uh, I've got the pattern here. And I'm not sure if it's on this part. This is how the, the cardigan looks. You can see it's a very simple design. Uh, but I again I think that I will get a lot of wear out of it. I think the pattern calls for a 5.5 millimeter. Yes, 5.5 millimeter. I'm using using a 4.5 millimeter. Um, uh, uh, this is a superwash yarn, and I know that superwash yarn uh, tend to stretch out a little bit. So, uh, just to maybe uh, prevent the, the cardigan from um, stretching out too much, I just did a, a larger number. Um, it seems that it worked out quite well. Uh, and the, when I did the, the garter stitch um, etching at the bottom, I used a 4 millimeter. And when I started the sleeves, uh, when, when um, the sleeves are also knitted in the round, and when I started the sleeves, um, the, when I alternated the two yarns, it looked, a, it looked different from, uh, from the the body, the, the color play look different because when you knit the body you go um, it's it's knitted um, flat because it's open on the in the front it's it's an open cardigan so you knit it flat so you you go um, that way and this way and that way and this way and when you knit the sleeves you go into the, in the round and that um, made that the, um, the, it looked different, the, the two skeins, even when I alternated the, the, the color pattern uh, looked very different. And um, I think that I will never be totally comfortable with knitting with magic loop sleeves. I don't like deep ends and even magic loop is not... I don't think that I will ever enjoy knitting with magic loop. I'm not a sock knitter and um, I don't know, it's just not, I'm not comfortable with knitting that way. I can do it but maybe uh, one day I will find someone that can I can do a course with or a class with and maybe there's some tips and tricks that will um, 
make it uh, more comfortable for me to knit ma with magic loop. So what I decided to do is to knit the sleeves flat as well. This is the second sleeve and the, the color play worked out almost identical to uh, the color play in the cardigan in the body when I'm knitting it flat. Um, and I saw once uh, um, Anna from Dunkelgrün podcast, she says that she always um, knits her sleeves separately and then uh, just add uh, with the live stitches as well and then just um, bind, bind them off together. Uh, and that is what, what I did. Um, and uh, I think uh, when it's washed and blocked, uh, you won't even notice it. It's almost impossible to see where I joined the sleeves to give to the body. So I just um, I gave it a seam. I seamed it up from the uh, the wrist, seamed it up, and then I just uh, attached it. To the um, live stitches of that's on the that was on the cable, and I also did uh, a few rows of garter. The pattern is for a uh, like a three quarter sleeve, but this is such a warm, cuddly jersey. I don't think I um, I think I will get more wear out of it if it's got long sleeves. So that is what I did. I just did um, the, the garter stitch here I did with a 3.5 needle to get it to be more fitted around my wrist yeah so the first sleeve is all finished and attached and when the second sleeve is finished I will add that and then all that is needed is to um, pick up stitches um, front um, the left and right fronts and just knit one or two rows there and then my uh, quicksand cardigan will be finished you can see there you can see a little bit where I joined the sleeve but I think when it is uh, washed and blocked you will not notice and it's actually very easy to do that <laughs> um, and it's it's like magic to me um, I, I use the method where um, I do a, a provisional cast on for the sleeves there is the provisional cast on and then I just knit my sleeves and then I as I go I uh, I pull out um, I pull out this you you um, just rip it back here with that uh, waist yarn you rip the waist yarn back I do it carefully stitch for stitch and um, while I'm uh, ripping out this uh, uh, waist yarn I do the the joining. And I just go, um, I do it um, the, the way that you just, uh, let's see if I can explain that, that you, you go in, um, I think it's in at the first stitch and out at the second stitch and then the same here, in and out and then you go in here um, you go in your in at your second stitch and then out at the next stitch and then again yeah then the the and don't you just don't uh, you have to 
be careful not to pull it your yarn too tight so you you're actually making an extra row by um, making a stitch um, through two of these two of this side and then two of this side and that is then the way that you then attach your um, sleeve to your body and it looks like an extra row that you have made so you are mimic mimicking the the stitch the exact stitch that you've used here so that will be my quicksand gaudy it's so lovely and cuddly and i'm sure i will get a lot of wear out of it i just hope that it will be cold enough here in south africa for um to so that i can wear it a lot and um then some uh i've i always have um I don't, uh, I think when I, when I crochet or knit, I will always have a blanket. I will always, one of my projects that I'm busy with will always be a blanket. Um, sometimes more than one, uh, either crochet or knit. Um, I have not um, made any progress on my, my, on my log cabin knitted blanket. Um, if you go back to previous podcasts, I've talked a lot about it. Uh, I've still got to make three more squares and um, join them together in a panel. And then I can attach that third panel to the other two. And then that uh, log cabin blanket will be um, completed. But I've started some more projects um, for actually for samples and ideas for my workshops um, one that i've started is um, i just want to see what is the front and what is the back so this is the front i'm using miss lamotte um, singles two strands held together It's also um, a log cabin um, square, but um, I'm only going to keep on uh, making it larger and larger. So it won't be um, different squares. It will only be one square that will just grow. Uh, for this one, I'm using the half double crochet. So it's crocheted and I'm using two strands of uh, Miss Lamotte um, Merino singles. It's a fingering weight and a four millimeter tulip etimo rose crochet hook that is my favorite go-to crochet hooks um, i just love the feeling and i love the color play that i've got here the last color i'm busy with is um, these two to give you an idea they are very light so I'm just um, alternating one color at, um, for each lock when I turn I um, alternate to one of the colors So that is a, a mitered, uh, a, a log cabin blankie. I will just, um, I will stop when my yarn is, um, when I've used up all the yarns that I've got. Um, but I, so I think it will be a, a nice cuddly um, baby blanket, but it won't be small. It will be a, a quite a large baby blanket, I hope for. Then I've also started, um, I've only made one, I, I've wanted to make this since I, I've seen it um, um, 
Amber from the Yarn Order podcast. She's also uh, making this mitered squares. Uh, so it's only four mitered squares. And then it's got each of the four mitered squares has got a, a log cabin uh, border. I've only made the one square um, and then I decided I would rather um, just put it away first and try to finish my cardigan and then um, I have to finish my log cabin blanket first because I'm allowed to come back to um, this. Um, I hope I, I can um, restrain myself because I really love doing this. I'm using a, a sock white yarn from Miss Lamotte and um, with, together with that I'm using a strand of merino lace. Uh, there's four different yarns from four different uh, yarn companies um, in South Africa that I'm going to use in these squares. Uh, so it's the, let me show you, this is the, the sock weight from Miss Lamotte I'm using. And uh, for the squares, together with this, I'm using the uh, merino lace from Wishbone. So this is the merino lace from Wishbone and the sock white yarn, and I'm using them together. And then um, for the for the lock cabin part that goes around these four squares. I'm using the uh, vanilla, just a plain vanilla color from Nurturing Fibers. And with that, I'm using a one of a kind yarns merino lace again. So this is my mitre, it's the first time I've knitted mitre squares and I enjoy it very much. I can't wait to continue with this. It's a nice, um, a nice feeling for, for a blankie. Um, the knitting with only the sock weight um, yarn from the sock, sock weight um, I think that maybe one day I, w I will um, do it with only this. But I always enjoy um, combining different yarns and making um, changing colors. And um, I love the effect that you can get, the mold effect that you can get when you are using um, uh, multiple strands together. And I think I will always, that will always be my preferred method. Um, except when, when you are already using a, a double knit weight yarn like the um, chameleon blanket I made then um, I will use one, only one strand. I think that is all that I wanted to show um, today. I hope that um, I'm not going to edit this. <laughs> I, I, I know that there is a few parts where um, it sounds like, like I don't know what I'm saying or how to say it. I'm sure with time I will um, be able to, to get more fluent and to um, explain things a little bit better. <laughs> Especially where I try to explain where I join the sleeves to the body of the cardigan. That I know that didn't sound quite well at all. But um, I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, I've, uh, uh, when, when I try to edit um, my podcast, it's always, it doesn't seem to be, I don't know. I can't. I can't do it professionally. I think I don't have the right uh, software to to edit uh, the podcasts. 
um, correctly and um, I'm not tech, um, I'm not a tech fundi so um, I like to knit and crochet all this uh, computer technical stuff um, it, it's really frustrating for me I see I'm at 45 minutes so I think it's uh, time for me to say goodbye I hope that um, I've gained some new viewers um, I've got to say welcome and uh, to all my uh, returning viewers and um, I hope that um, you will come back for the next one and I hope that I w won't it will be um, less than a month before I come back again with a new podcast uh, enjoy the weekend today is the 8th Friday um, Friday the 8th of June so um, I hope that I will be able to upload this video um, tonight so enjoy your weekend and I hope that you will have a lot of knitting and crochet time bye